It is re really hard to extrapolate out what's going to happen over the next years. The layoffs keep coming. Laying off 10% of its workforce. Tech companies announcing layoffs. There's been a whole bunch of layoffs in big tech. Our career questions has been an absolute dumpster fire for the last few months as well. Of course, this has people worrying about the IT and cybersecurity job market as well. I'm going to give my quick opinion about this and what I think is going on with the job market in relation to the economy. We're going to go over the cybersecurity job market, looking at some hard facts as well as some historical data to kind of make projections about the future of the job market. I'm going to talk about what I think you should be doing in 2024 and going into 2025. And then finally, I'm going to answer the OP's question about if I think the WGU cybersecurity program is still worth it in 2024. So if you're worried about the job market, you're interested in getting into cybersecurity, or you're thinking about getting a degree, definitely keep watching. So getting into my opinion about the economy and job market and everything, you know, we can say we might be in a period of economic uncertainty because there's like a lot of progression with the language models and AI. And then we have big tech, right, laying off a whole bunch of people, like tens of thousands of people in like the last what, couple of years or something, you know, software engineering years having a hard time finding a job and everything I will say I'm not I don't feel too worried like if I were to go and try to find a job right now because there's there's still a lot of there's a bunch of industries and there's like a lot of jobs and not the economy and language models are not going to affect every one of those industries and it's not going to be able to replace everyone essentially right and all every single time when some really nice new technology comes out jobs kind of like get shuffled around like a lot of new stuff is created and a lot of the stuff that, you know, maybe it's easy to get automated away, that stuff gets automa automated away, right? Because of how good AI is now. Of course, jobs are getting shuffled around and, you know, big tech is laying people off. But again, like what Google and them are doing is not necessarily indicative of what everyone's doing. And I will say like, you know, people make the argument like 10,000 people got laid off at Google. They're just gonna like take all the IT jobs. But if you, if you think about it, and me, my, myself included, if I'm working for like 150, 180 K and I get laid off from Google, I'm going to remain jobless and probably do hobbies or something before I take like a 40 or 50 K a year help desk job at some company that I've never heard of. Right. Usually those people will have like some kind of asset. Usually I, I can't speak for everyone. They'll have like at least some kind of cushion where, where they're going to figure out what to do and, and ride things out. It's not like they're all going to go and like work IT or something and like like tech and product and stuff and those, those big companies. It's not the same as like working support and doing, um, you know, sys admin at some random company, right? Making 70K. It's like, a you know, they have the aptitude to do that, but it's kind of two different things. So I guess don't confuse like what Fang companies are doing with the normal job market is doing and don't assume all those people are going to like take up all like the entry level IT job. Probably Probably some people will, but I, I can't imagine a significant amount of people are going to do that. So that's kind of my opinion uh, on the economy and job market as of at least, what is it, March 21, 2024. So getting into the actual cybersecurity job market and the current demand using historical data, I found this really cool site. Uh, it's called cyberseek.org and it, it looks like it aggregates cybersecurity and employment data from NICE, NIST, and ISACA. So there's like a nice database of um, cybersecurity employability information. Feel free to check it out and follow along if you want. Um, but currently it looks like there's a 72% supply demand ratio for cybersecurity jobs. Um, this just means there's only enough cybersecurity professionals in existence to fill 72% of the total jobs available. So there are definitely cybersecurity jobs out there. It's just our job is a candidate to get the necessary skills to do the job and then do what we need to do to convey those skills to convince people to hire us essentially definitely check out this employability framework i i talk about exactly what you need to do to get an interview and then pass the interview once you have it check out this video as well like how i would basically get into cybersecurity for as free as possible like only using the google cybersecurity certificate i get really creative in that video so check that out and then if we check out the historical cybersecurity job openings relative to 2010 it looks like it's up 74%. You can kind of see it's a really, I guess, modest curve. And there's been a slight bit of like raise and installing and then raise and installing and slightly going down. Um, but we're going to look at like the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics later to kind of uh, extrapolate on this in the next 10 years. But it, it's trend, it's trending upward, I would say, and it's sidestepping a bit. And then if we look at 
um, historical employed cybersecurity workforce relative to 2010. Um, this is trending upwards as well. And I will say there's a bunch of other cool data on this website. If you look at certification holders versus opening uh, openings requesting certification, you can see like most people have CompTIA Security Plus. And by the way, I have like free practice question decks for all of these. And if we look at uh, openings requesting certifications, um, this is not surprising for me. Like CISSP is the absolute like best certification that you can get. Um, if you want HR to like, contact you for your interviews. I also have like a very large, high quality uh, practice question set for CISSP as well. Oh, that's what this, this side, that's what this thing is, CISSP. Um, I just put it up there to like fill space on the wall, but that's, that's what it looks like anyway. Uh, but yeah, check those out. And then looking at the Bureau of Labor Statistics information real quick for cybersecurity jobs. Um, we look at the job outlook for from 2022 to 2032. That's like a 10 year span. Um, increase in 32% of jobs, employment change in those 10 years, uh, 53,000. So it's it's looking up. Uh, this is definitely higher than average. Oh, it says on here actually much faster than average. So definitely the industry is growing, but obviously, you know, it's going to change because of the nature of the industry. And then when we have like cool new technologies come out, right? Of course, like the defenders aren't the only ones using it. The attackers will figure out ways to like weaponize GPT and other language models, for example, and then they're gonna make a bunch of new problems and then, you know, the blue team or the defending people need to uh, address those, right? Educate yourself and stay up to date and, and be aware of the new stuff that's coming out and try to incorporate it in your daily life uh, the best you can. So what I think you should do in 2024 and going into 2025, pretty much nothing really special, right? Just keep working on your skills and developing yourself, um, whatever that means. Like if you look at the employability framework, or maybe you're gonna be working on a bachelor's degree, maybe you're gonna be working on cert certifications or portfolio or something like this, just practicing labs, nothing really new otherwise, because what are you going to do when the economy is like not looking good? Like, okay, the economy sucks better, like stop studying and like better, better not get my degree since the economy is down. Like this is the time where you should, well, you should always be doing this, but you should always be like making yourself um, as employable as you can be. You know, if you care about that kind of thing to make sure you're employable to a broad range of employers. So yeah, just keep studying as you normally would, you know, look at the employability framework, look at where you're weak and what you need to improve on and just make sure to hit all of those areas. So finally answering OP's question, do I think the WG cybersecurity bachelor's degree is worth it? Um, I definitely do now even more than ever. Not only it has a lot of really marketable certifications on it, it now has the, what is it, the NSA's uh, Center of Academic Excellence designation as well. That basically means the NSA is like, okay, you're okay. Yeah, your curriculum is good. We like bless you and like approve of this and you're teaching good stuff. Not only is the, the program really good and the certifications in it are really relevant, like they come up in job hits a lot. Um, it's also focused to help you be able to work in defense and government as well if you want, because government has this thing called DOD Directive 8570 and 8140, which has like requirements for certain certifications. And I believe like most if not all of the certifications um, in that degree uh, apply to DOD 8570 and 8140. It's like applicable to those jobs. So that allows you to work in defense and defense contracts and which you can get a security clearance from that and end up, you know, being, how, how can I say, you can get a decent amount of money, but the number of people who have a security clearance is like quite small. So if you have one, then your job security goes up by like, you know, a, an order of magnitude, I would say. If you're capable of have certifications and a security clearance, you, you just, you don't have to worry about finding a job, in my opinion. So absolutely, I think it's worth it. I made a couple of videos about it. Um, definitely check this one out. It's the most recent one I made, and it's definitely possible to get this degree relatively quickly if you strategize about it and like pregame and stuff. I made a video talking about that, and I completely outlined like how you can prepare for it and included like a complete like compilation of study guides for each individual class in the form of Reddit posts. So it's, it's possible to get this degree in like a term from WG, which is six months. But if you're like a normal person and you're not going like completely crazy if you pregame it properly and then transfer credits from study.com it's definitely possible to complete it in at least a year for under ten thousand dollars or about ten thousand dollars if you go for two terms um it's the most to answer op's question yeah it's like definitely worth it it's like the highest value cybersecurity bachelor's degree and in my opinion based on like wg's model like how much it costs and how long it takes to get 
um, I think it's the best one, definitely worth it. Now, so off my own hands-on cybersecurity course, we do a bunch of stuff in Azure. We create like a, a miniature sock as well as a honey net. And we set up a SIM, which is Microsoft Sentinel. We deal with live attack traffic on the internet and we practice incident response against actual incidents that happen against our, um, our cloud resources. Pretty interesting. We put together a portfolio and stuff in that course, redo your resume. There's also an optional internship component to the course. I talk all about it in this video, super transparent about it. And it's actually working. Employers have been calling me and emailing me to ask about, you know, to provide a reference for students and interns and people who have gone through the course. And people are definitely getting hired from it. Um, I'm really happy to see that. So definitely check it out. I kind of designed it for people who have, you know, security plus ish level knowledge who need to bridge that gap and actually find their first job. Um, so it's been pretty successful. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.